If you were to ask someone what makes an ideal laptop for day-to-day -day use, I'm sure not a lot will disagree with me when I say design, performance, and battery life are undeniably one of the most important aspects of a portable business computer. And last year, Huawei kicked it off pretty well with their 2019 Huawei MateBook X Pro. Now, they've updated their flagship Ultrabook for 2020 and packed some pretty cool additional features as well. What's up guys, Josh here with Yugatech, and this over here is the Huawei MateBook X Pro. Now, before we dive any deeper, what we have over here is a review unit. So out of the box, we just get the device itself, along with a 65 watt charging brick and your standard USB-C to USB-C charging cable. When it comes to looks, not much has changed from their previous models, and that's not a bad thing for once. The aluminum alloy unibody design has always been one of the most eye-catching elements of the MateBook X Pro series. Although it only comes in the space gray variant here in the Philippines, it's still a sleek and minimalist looking machine that's fit for any occasion be it work or leisure. It also comes in an ultra portable form factor and I can honestly say it's easily one of my favorite looking ultrabooks so far. With a thickness of only 14.6 millimeters and a weight of 1.33 kilograms, it's easy to slip in just about any bag, making it an ideal laptop for an on-the-go lifestyle. The attention to detail Huawei put into this model is evident from the shiny metallic trim accents, the sharp edges, and sleek contours really elevating this laptop from the competition. All in all, it's a beautiful piece of machinery that's easy on the eyes. To help keep this device's slim profile, the MateBook X Pro has a full-size TKL chiclet-style keyboard, which I'm honestly not a fan of. The buttons are not as springy as I'd have hoped, travel is short, but they are quite silent. And although laid out very well, there was a slight learning curve getting used to typing on this machine and it took me a few days of consistent use to finally get accustomed to the setup. The keys are also backlit, so working in dim environments shouldn't be a problem. You get two brightness settings and of course the option to switch the lights off, which happens anyway if you leave it untouched for 10 seconds. Now when laptop manufacturers started lessening their ports, I was initially worried. Buying those extra dongles and carrying them every day can be quite a hassle sometimes. But, as I was using the MateBook X Pro, having a single USB-A port didn't affect my day-to-day -day use as much as I thought. I was able to transfer my files like normal and would only ever need to use the mouse for when I would game, which I wouldn't do at the same time anyway. It does have two USB-C ports on the left, both supporting data transfer with one of them being your charging port. You even get a little LED battery indicator light so you don't need to open your device to know when it's fully charged. Yes, it's not an innovation by any means, but simple attention to detail like this is something that we appreciate a lot. Thankfully, Huawei still keeps audio files in mind and incorporates the standard 3.5mm audio microphone jack just in case you are not satisfied with their built-in microphone and speakers. If there's one comment I can make about the ports, it's the lack of an SD card reader. As a multimedia producer, being able to have a built-in SD card in a laptop is one of the most essential things you can ask for, especially if you travel around often. If you're into creating content yourself, then you probably already have an external SD card reader anyway, so I don't consider this to be a major issue. But it is worth mentioning if you're used to laptops with built-in SD card readers. Personally, I'm pretty happy with it. Looking over at the display, it's got a 13.9 inch 3K touchscreen LTPS display with a wide viewing angle of 178 degrees, 100% sRGB gamut coverage, and a max brightness of 450 nits. These displays are known to handle higher pixel densities than your standard IPS, so that explains why everything looks so crisp and clear down to the last pixel. Due to its glossy finish, it does have an apparent glare under natural light, although bumping up the brightness does help a lot. Watching videos on the MateBook X Pro felt immersive without all those distracting borders getting in the way of your viewing experience. As for the touchscreen display, it works pretty well and is very responsive. The hinge has a good build quality and is enough to tap on the screen without too much wiggle. I expected a dedicated stylus to accompany their touchscreen display, so upon searching, it seems like they do have one based on their official website, but it looks like it's only available in certain regions for now. A big caveat of this touchscreen display is the fact that there's no way of folding it all the way back to be able to convert it to a standalone tablet unlike some other touchscreen competitors out there. It just would have made more sense if Huawei made this fully foldable. I don't know why they didn't. Initially, I thought this was one of the most least important features of the MateBook X Pro, but I did eventually find it to be quite useful for whenever my hands started to get tired from using the trackpad. With the one megapixel camera hidden at the top portion of the keyboard just like their previous models, it does save space to achieve that borderless look, 
as well as give the user some added privacy. While I do appreciate this design language, having a non-adjustable camera at a low angle is just not an ideal position for anyone really. Sure, it does look fine when you prop it up to a desk, but nobody wants to see what's in your nose. Apart from that, I find myself often struggling to prop the laptop at a certain position like when it's on my lap just to be able to get a proper angle, which fails about 90% of the time. So good luck to those late night bedside video calls if you're used to that. This is probably the only major design flaw of this type of setup and it would've been nice if there was just some way for it to be mechanically adjustable at the very least. But it's good to know that closing the lid with the camera activated does not affect anything whatsoever and remains open when you want it to be. Heading over to sound quality, the Huawei MateBook X Pro's quad speaker setup is surprisingly good. The bass is well balanced, although the highs get pretty tinny when you bump the volume up to 100%. Although I realized that even at 80%, it was loud enough to fill up an average sized room so I never really needed to max the volume out. Propping it up to a desk helps the bottom firing speakers give a fuller sound as compared to maybe having it play on your bed where speakers could potentially be covered, which might make it sound muffled. Thankfully, we still have two top firing speakers to make up for that issue. Although it may not be the best speakers I've heard on a laptop, it's still a pretty good backup music player. When it comes to microphone quality, Huawei also outfitted the MateBook X Pro with a 360 degree quad microphone setup with up to 4 meters of voice interaction, which was clear and crisp, making it an ideal laptop for voice over IP and conferencing calls. Now, we're not exactly sure where those four microphones are located physically, but I'd take a good guess and say that some of them are in the speaker grills. Either way, they work pretty well and I am happy with the quality. If you're wondering, here's a camera and microphone test of the Huawei MateBook X Pro for your reference. What's up guys, Josh here, Viva Tech, and this is... Moving on to performance and benchmark scores, the new Huawei MateBook X Pro sports a 10th gen Intel Core processor, 16GB of RAM, and NVIDIA's new MX250 graphics card, making this Ultrabook look like it means serious business. But let's dive in a little deeper. Powering this particular machine is an Intel Core i7-10U processor with turbo up to 4.9GHz, so expect this guy to be powerful and efficient. We get a very responsive fingerprint sensor at the top right corner, which gets that similar metallic treatment around the edge, adding to the extra premium feel. It also serves as the power button, which is activated with a hard press. With a 1TB M.2 SSD, we're not only expecting some quick read and write speeds, but fast boot up speeds as well. From the moment you press the power button, it took roughly 7.8 seconds for it to fully boot to the login screen, which is relatively normal for an Ultrabook, but still impressive. We did find the 16GB of RAM to be quite generous and didn't run through any problems, even running numerous programs and tabs. Putting it to the test, we ran the MateBook X Pro through some synthetic benchmarks in an ambient room temperature of 27 degrees, fully charged while plugged in into a charging outlet. On PC Mark 10, the updated MateBook X Pro gets a total score of 3046 points and passes with flying colors when it comes to essentials, productivity, and digital content creation, proving this Ultrabook a worthy companion for daily use. For Cinebench R20, we get a respectable single-core score of 374 and a surprising 990 for the multi-core performance. Keep in mind that this particular test stresses on the CPU and not the laptop's performance as a whole. But looking at it, the MateBook X Pro is sure to be able to handle all office-related workloads and light rendering work. As for Geekbench, we get a respectable score of 1026 for single-core performance and a whopping 2674 when it comes to multi-core, which are all pretty good results, but nothing mind-blowing. Obviously, this isn't a gaming laptop by any means, but it's a good thing to know that NVIDIA's MX250 graphics card still does its job pretty well. And with that 3K display, it sure is a great piece of machine not only for watching high-definition videos, but also for things like video editing and 3D modeling. But when it comes to gaming, that's a different ballpark. Having a high-resolution screen paired with an entry-level GPU is just not gonna cut it, which is understandable for an Ultrabook. Putting it to the test either way, the MateBook X Pro can handle the heat when it comes to some less graphically demanding games like CSGO, Dota 2, and Skyrim, but you're going to have to lower the resolution down to at least 1080p to be able to play smoothly. Temperatures were not so forgiving either, reaching around 90 degrees Celsius after using for prolonged periods of time. Initially, GTA 5 had a hard time running off the bat, but with enough tinkering, the MX250 graphics card was very capable of running this game smoothly which shouldn't be surprising because this was already done with Huawei's previous model sporting an MX150 graphics card. Just make sure to have the charger plugged in for better performance. So in short, yes you can game, but you will have to compromise a lot depending on the games that you plan to play. 
This isn't what the laptop was meant to do anyway, and I would be satisfied using it for work in the event that I don't have access to my personal desktop computer. My only gripe with this laptop is that it can get quite hot to the touch, especially if it's plugged in, making it almost unbearable to place on your lap after a while. Funny, being a laptop and all. The fans can also get noticeably loud at times depending on what you are running. With Huawei aiming to develop their working ecosystem, a lot of features have been added to this device to make it stand out from the rest of the competition. One thing that this company is really pushing for with their devices is their new Huawei Share feature, which enables Huawei phones to quickly communicate and share files with the MateBook X Pro just by simply placing your phone on the right side of the trackpad. Undoubtedly, the most attractive feature of Huawei Share is that when it comes to mobile gaming, there's practically zero latency between the two devices. Meaning you can literally play the game straight from your Huawei phone to the MateBook X Pro without any lag. And since this is a touchscreen, everything works as if it was just a giant phone, which we think is pretty amazing. Doing our standard video loop test, the MateBook X Pro lasted a total of only 4 hours and 42 minutes. Although Huawei does provide a feature to save on battery life when watching videos. Using it for work, I was able to get an average of about 6 hours before the battery levels hit 20%, which is more than enough for me. When it comes to charging, it took exactly 1 hour and 39 minutes to charge from 0 to 100%, which is quick considering how long this device can stay alive unplugged. Now, let's say you forget to bring your dedicated charger with you. I tried using my phone's standard charging adapter with a USB-C cable to see if the MateBook would charge, and at first, I thought it wouldn't work. But I gave it a little bit more time, and surprisingly, it booted up. And just for kicks, I tried plugging in my Sony 20,000 mAh power bank, and again, it worked. It definitely isn't going to charge as fast, and it's always recommended to use the charger that came with the device, but in case of an emergency, this is a really good feature to have. To wrap things up, the 2020 Huawei MateBook X is one stylish yet powerful ultrabook. If you're planning on investing in Huawei's ecosystem, or if you already are, this is something you should consider. We do have the more budget-friendly MateBook T15, but if you're looking for more raw power, the new MateBook X Pro would be the perfect companion for your day-to-day -day needs. However, if you don't even own a Huawei phone that's capable of their share features and just want a powerful on-the-go machine, then we suggest on considering something else. With that price range, you can find something that's more worth your money and has better camera viewing angles. <coughs> MacBook Pro. <coughs> but then again, I really enjoyed using this laptop as my daily driver for the past week and I'd happily accept it for free, but I just can't see myself spending that much money unless I hop on the train and go full Huawei with my devices. So what are your thoughts on the new Huawei MateBook X Pro? Let us know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon and be sure to visit yukatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Josh and stay safe.